investing in this stock. I am Mauricio Misquero, one of the ESRs of the Stardust R Network. And I work at the University of Rompar Vergata, and I'm going to present you a research entitled Orbital and Rotational Dynamics of Satellites and Asteroids. This research has been done in collaboration with uh, Alessandra Celetti and Joan Jimeno from the University of Tor Vergata and Rafael Ortega from the University of Granada. I will start my presentation showing you the mathematical model that we are going to deal with. And uh, this is going to take more or less half, half of the presentation. Then I will show you uh, some of the results uh, and some of the applications of the study. Okay. From now on, we will uh, call our model the spin-spin model because it deals with the spin-spin interaction of two extended bodies. As we see in the picture, there is a small body orbiting around a big one, uh, and both of them are spinning around their respective centers of mass. Uh, for example, the bodies can be the Earth or the uh, and uh, and an asteroid or a satellite. And they can even be uh, objects of similar size, like uh, in a binary asteroid. Uh, we, uh, we will assume that the orbital motion is Keplerian, consequently, planar and periodic. Uh, the planar, uh, the, no, the spin orbit, the spin spin model is a particular case of the full two body problem of celestial mechanics. Um, it is indeed a planar version of it because. Uh, both bodies are assumed to be rotating with an axis perpendicular to the orbital plane. Uh, and moreover, uh, we assume that the bodies are triaxial ellipsoids with a common equatorial, play, equatorial plane. And also that the shortest axis of both ellipsoids are perpendicular to the plane of motion. The last configuration uh, recalls us the classical spin orbit problems, problem of celestial mechanics in which we consider one, that one of the bodies acts as a point mass. Uh, so and the spin-spin model that we are calling our model is a natural extension of, of this simpler model, and both of them share many features. Uh, actually, compared to the spin uh, to the spin orbit model, the spin uh, spin has only one degree of freedom more, uh, and the, we will discuss uh, uh, this later. Um, the common dynamical features are, for example, that uh, the, in both cases, we assume that the orbital motion uh, is periodic. So the spin motion will be determined by periodic equations. Uh, on the other hand, both models have a Hamiltonian structure because they have, de have been derived uh, using, using a gravitational potential energy, uh, meaning that we are in a conservative setting. Uh, however, the assumption that the Keplerian, that the orbit is Keplerian implies that the Hamiltonian described in the system is non-autonomous and in fact is periodic. Uh, besides, in both cases, uh, it is interesting to study the resonances between the orbital motion and the spin motion. Around these resonances, the system uh, behaves uh, like a pendulum structure, like a pendulum, uh, and we will explain this later too. Mauricio, Mauricio, it's Pelayo here. I, I think we are seeing your presentation notes as well. So maybe oh, you want to switch the, the screen you're sharing. Yes, sorry. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so let me see. Now, no, again, we are seeing my things. Okay. Now, I think, okay, now. Okay, so uh, let's go to this point, okay? So, in <coughs> no, here, no, here, yeah. In general, both bodies can be of comparable sizes. So the monsoon ceiling from uh, an inertial reference frame is, is the following. The very center of the system moves with constant uh, velocity, so we can consider it that fixed at the origin. Uh, each of the bodies perform a Keplerian orbit uh, uh, with a focus at the origin. Uh, besides, the orbit of the body with the larger mass is smaller and vice versa. Uh, in fact, both ellipses uh, have the same eccentricity, and but different semi-major axis. 
Uh, in this figure, we can see that the orbits of the bodies uh, given by R, uh, which is the relative distance, and F is the angular position of one of the bodies. The, the, and the other body is at the opposite position. And also the, the, the angles determine, determine, determining the, the, the orientation of the bodies are theta two and theta one. Okay, in this slide we show the synchronous, uh, the synchronous resonant motion of both the spin orbit problem and the spin spin model. The synchronous resonance means that after one turn of the orbit, the, all, the body also completes one turn uh, with respect to the respective centers of mass. Uh, here we can see that the two real examples of this phenomenon, uh, in one hand we have uh, the, the, the fact that the, we see the moon uh, that uh, we always see the same side of the moon because its or orbital and spin motions are, are uh, synchronized. The same happens with Pluto and, and its moon Charon. Uh, both uh, both point to each other the same side. Uh, know that this, in the animations that we show up here, uh, we include uh, orbits that are eccentric. Um, the angle between the direction of uh, uh, to the to the central body and to the and the, um, the the elongation direction of the elongation of the of the ellipsoid is not always uh, pointing at the same direction. Uh, so in this case, uh, we have uh, uh, th that this angle uh, is performing uh, it's performing a, a dynamics that is uh, that resembles a, a, like a pendulum. Um, in the case of, uh, the, of the moon and the, and the pluto charon system, we have that the eccentricity is very small, so the oscillation is almost imperceptible. Okay, the common parameters describing the common parameters describing an ellipsoid, apart from its mass, are the principal semi-axis a, b, or uh, and c. An equivalent, we can consider the, the principal moments of inertia, namely the same letters, but capitalized. An order in the semi-axis correspond to an opposite order in the, in the moments of inertia. So, however, but in this study, we are going to, to take uh, these other quantities that are measured with respect to the, to the uh, equatorial plane, which is the uh, equatorial vagueness and the flatness uh, of, of an ellipsoid and uh, we will use these parameters later. So let us uh, show the equations of motion uh, considering uh, four variables, R, F, theta one and theta two. And here we, he we see the associated uh, Euler-Lagrange equations of motion. Uh, this is a coupled system of four variables. The equation of the spin motion appear here uh, up and the orbital motion appear here. Uh, they are written in terms of the moments of inertia, C1, C2, uh, the reduced mass of the system, mu, which is uh, given here, and also depend on the potential energy, uh, V. Uh, uh, actually, uh, it's certainly difficult to compute the, this uh, um, gravitational energy uh, because we are not dealing with point masses, but extended bodies, so we have uh, uh, we can use uh, properties of uh, the spherical harmonics, uh, so we are able to compute the, the, the full expansion uh, of, of the planar problem. The, the, this expansion is written in terms of, of, of G, the gravitational constant, the masses of the bodies, uh, the distance between the bodies, some constants. These R's are the, the mean radius of the, the ellipsoids, and this set these sets are the the Kepler no the the Stokes coefficients of the of the of each of the ellipsoids. Okay, so in this expansion can be understood as a, as a summation of a different terms. Uh, the first term is of course the Keplerian part. Uh, this is the point-point interaction, and it's proportional to the inverse of the distance. Then we have the spin-orbit coupling or the interaction between a point and extended body. This is proportional to the third power of the, of the inverse of the distance. And finally, we have the spin-spin coupling, which uh, um, uh, represents the, the, the interaction between two extended bodies and goes to, uh, to a power five 
of the of the inverse of the distance. Um, so we can consider the, the, that the Keplerian that the orbit is a perturbed Keplerian Keplerian motion. But in a first approximation, we can uh, assume that the orbit is uh, Keplerian, and uh, and this regard these other terms only in the orbital part. But in the spin part, we can uh, uh, assume that uh, they all contribute. Um, okay, so with the assumption of the Keplerian orbit in this slide, we see that the, we see the equations of uh, the spin-spin model. The orbit is determined by the by the Kepler problem we see here at the bottom. The orbit is elliptic and depends on two parameters: the semi-major axis and the eccentricity. Um, here we see the expressions of R and F in uh, with respect to time, uh, which we obtain by solving the Kepler's equation. Uh, so with these functions, uh, depending on time as input, we, uh, we see how the, the angles evolve in time uh, with this equation. Um, uh, here in these equations, we see, uh, we see it in a compact form for J1, for j equals one and two for both bodies. And uh, we see that the, uh, the that the equation depends on several parameters here in purple. Uh, this lambda g, this q, this qj, and these djs. And, uh, but these, all, all these quantities are very small, so we consider uh, them as a perturbation. Actually, the the spin spin perturbation is is of of, of higher order. is of a, is of a smaller order with respect to the spin orbit model. Uh, the spin orbit case here we see that the 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 term of uh, the speed that is related to the spin orbit problem that goes as the third power of uh, the distance. Uh, then we have terms of higher order spin orbit. Uh, the, orders, uh, higher order spin of the orbit terms. And uh, th there is not coupling here between the angles. You see, it, it appears only one angle. But in the last term, we see that the, that uh, inside the sinus, uh, there are the, the two angles. So, the, the, so in this term, we find the coupling between the, the dynamics of, uh, of, of the two. Um, since all the terms with lambda j can be written as a partial derivatives of, uh, of a potential, our system has a Hamiltonian structure that depends on these six parameters. Okay, so the previous model was obtained taking into account that we use a, a special, special units uh, for example, we impose that the, that the orbital mean motion is, uh, no, that the orbital mean motion is 2 pi, so the, 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 the period is, the mean motion is 1, so the, the period is 2 pi, so we have the units of time. We put uh, the same uh, units of, of mass, uh, um, such as the, the, the sum of, of both uh, equals 1, and the sum of the uh, of uh, the moments of inertia e equals one two. Also, uh, the parameters that appear in the model uh, are uh, these ones. This lambda j is the equatorial obliteness of, of each of the bodies. The these dj are the equatorial obliteness, but in this case, with respect to the size of the orbit, because this dj is, is referred to one of the of the ellipsoid, and the uh, and here we see the a, which is the the uh, the semi-major axis of the of the orbit, and also this qj hat qj is the flatness, but we also with respect to the size of the of the orbit, these are much smaller uh, parameters. Um, okay, so uh, this depends on six. So our model depends on six independent parameters that are shown here. The rest are obtained with the relations, symmetry relations, with the uh, using these expressions. And uh, we are interested in the, in characterizing the the, the dynamics of, uh, of this problem uh, when we change the, the, the parameters. Okay, so the assumption of the Keplerian orbit uh, allows us to study the resonances between the orbital motion and the spin motion. 
So we call a resonance M1, M2, N to a solution of the equation uh, of this type in which after M turns, uh, the, the, um, the ellipsoids complete exactly N1 and N2 uh, turns, uh, respectively. Uh, the simplest of such resonances is the double synchronous resonance in which after one turn, of orbital turn, uh, both uh, bodies complete exactly one turn. Uh, there are some real known systems in, uh, of, in this particular double synchronous state, um, such as the Pluto current system, as an example, but we have also some binary asteroids that are in this particular resonance. Now we want to see um, if there's a double synchronous solution that is stable, or more precisely, linearly stable. Uh, the most natural way that we can look for this solution is to make a continuation of solution from the case in which the orbits are circular. In this case, the solution uh, in which uh, these theta, uh, theta 1 and theta 2 are exactly equal to t, and this is the case when this uh, term inside the sinus uh, is identically zero because it corresponds to the equilibrium of the pendulum. And OK, so uh, in this slide, we show that the, since the spin orbit problem is a particular case of our model, uh, we can do the, the we can do a similar study in the spin orbit problem. So we, we, we see in the in, in this axis the eccentricity of, of the of the orbit and in this axis also the the oblateness of, of the of, of the body. Uh, so in this case, we ha we can do a uh, and a study of the stability of the, of the synchronous resonance in this case. And, um, but in the spin-spin or the spin-spin problem, we cannot do the same because we have six free parameters. So we are forced to, um, to treat uh, special cases. For example, uh, we have the, uh, when the, when both bodies are of equal size, uh, if, uh, the, if this parameter hat Q um, equal zero, it means that the, the that the system is uncoupled. So the so we see that the that the that the stability diagram is exactly uh, the same as the spin orbit problem. But when we increase this hat Q, uh, the the stability diagram starts to change. Actually, when uh, in this in this bifurcation point of the of the instability of the instability region, actually bifurcates into two points, and um, uh, we keep uh, um, increasing this hat Q to see the difference be, uh, between the the, uh, the the stability diagrams up to 0 0.2. We don't know up to which uh, uh, value is. Uh, um, is going to be acceptable, but uh, we, we we do it up to 0 0.2, and in this in this plot we see that the that the stability diagrams are 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 overlapped to each other, uh, so we see the darkest uh, the darkest regions uh, are regions of more overlapping of the unsta uh, unstable region. So. Um, Actually, uh, the, in the spin orbit problem, we have a, a behavior here interesting. That is that for large eccentricities, we have uh, uh, um, instability. Uh, actually, in the spin spin problem, uh, the, the double synchronous resonance uh, seems to be. Um, it seems that the, the that for high eccentricities, the spin orbit problem tends to stabilize these these. these these, these motions, uh, as as we see here, but up to a value of the of this parameter hat Q that uh, we don't uh, that we don't know exactly uh, how much is it, but later we are going to see uh, uh, how 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 long we can extend these diagrams. Yeah, Mauricio, you still have ten minutes. Five okay. for putting your talk and five for discussion. Okay. So uh, also we have some uh, theoretical estimates of these regions in which ha we have used only analytical tools. So with this analytical tool, we have applied it to the, 
to this uh, cap system of coupled pendula that uh, is uh, non-autonomous and it's a kind of a difficult system, but we uh, were able to uh, have some um, some theoretical estimates. Here we see in yellow the, the 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 stability regions that we have estimated with our mathematical techniques. The more yellow is the region, uh, the stability is, is guaranteed for larger values of hat cube. Uh, these regions are obviously much smaller than the previous ones that we see here, that they are much smaller. Uh, uh, but this is not surprising because we are dealing with a rather complicated system that is time dependent and has two degrees of freedom. Uh, on the other hand, we see that the uh, under the dashed lines, uh, we uh, guarantee uh, the uniqueness of the solution, of, 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 of a particular solution that we talk about, that is a continuation of the equilibrium of the pendulum. Um, in this diagram, we have put a position here, a point that represents the, the, the asteroid 617 Patroclus, uh, that is the target of the, of the Lucy mission. We have included here this case because uh, both uh, components of, uh, of the systems are of similar sizes. Um, okay, we see that with our, with our theoretical estimates, we are able to guarantee the uniqueness of the solution, but not the, 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 but not the stability of, of, of the solution since the, the, the region is, is much smaller. We can do an analogous study uh, when the body is k times the size, the, when one of the bodies, k, the, the bodies is k times size the other one. Uh, when we fix k, we also have three parameters. Uh, the, that is, also, uh, again, the eccentricity, and the, in this case, lambda 2 and, and hat q1. Um, so in this slide, uh, we show only the stability region that corresponds to hat q1 equals to 0 0.05. Uh, which is a rather large value. Uh, the rest of the curves of, um, of that, that appear here corresponds to the uh, to the other values of, of, of this hat cube. Um, we see that uh, actually these diagrams for different case actually look quite the same. Um, if if we see more in detail, this uh, th th this first diagram is a bit different from the rest of the, uh, the the rest of the diagrams but these all three are quite the are quite the same so uh, and the the difference are not perceptible so uh, it looks at the the also that the in all the cases the the bifurcation that we have uh, seen in the previous slide uh, let's, let's show we have a bifurcation of, of, of this point in, in, in two parts it, it doesn't happen here with the, when the difference between the, the, the bodies is, is larger than, than two, at least here in the case that K equals two, it's unperceptible. So, um, so when, when K is more than two, um, we see that the, that the diagrams are quite, are quite similar. The theoretical estimates uh, change slightly, but uh, the, in, the, in the case of, of double size uh, of k equal to, let's say, uh, now we have include the pluto current system, which is uh, uh, because Pluto is more or less twice the size of Karen. Uh, now this, we see that our theoretical estimates uh, cover the, the case of, of Pluto and Karen. Um, also, this is because the, the, the orbit is quite circular and the bodies are almost spherical, so it's not, it's not a surprise. Okay, in this slide we show, we see the reference to a first paper of this model, which consists on the previous study and also on an analysis of uh, the continuation of, of solution to the dissipative regime, when we include a dissipative torque, dissipative tidal torque. In this case, the solution of the the solutions of the conservative problems are uh, the conservative problem that are linearly stable can be continued to a symptotically stable solution of the dissipative case. So basically, the dissipation uh, stabilizes the resonances.
just remark that in all the study, our results are made on, a, uh, on the pendulum-like system that is fully non-autonomous, meaning that we consider any value of the eccentricity, any large value of the eccentricity. But I'm not going to get into more detail here. Uh, instead, I would like just mention uh, uh, some of the ongoing, ongoing work. Uh, in the spin orbit problem, the size of the orbit is not a parameter of the model, but in the spin orbit and spin spin model, it is. Uh, of course, the spin spin coupling is stronger for bodies that are close to each other. But how close? So um, recall that the spin spin model has the assumption of the, that the orbit is elliptic. So if the bodies are very close to each other, we expect that this orbit can differ a lot from being elliptic. Actually, if they are too close to each other, there is a possibility of collision. Uh, we have made some numerical exploration, so we want to compare the solutions of the spin orbit, the spin spin model with the solution of the full model of four variables. And there is a particular solution that we that we use as a reference for comparison and is the double synchronous re, uh, resonance solution that we started in a previous slide. So once we find the, the double synchronous solution, we take its initial condition uh, and run the full model and we see what happens to the solution. And this is what happens. The results on this slide and this is light. Um, the parameters A and E are, are uh, associated to the spin spin model uh, because uh, the semi major axis and the, uh, and the eccentricity of the, of the orbit. In the full model, we consider that the orbit is, uh, is perturbed. So we, so we don't have an E and A constant. We have this. Uh, <clears throat> Um, we have these elements that uh, that are oscillating, that they are oscillating elements that vary in time, but we find out that uh, the, 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 that they show generally a periodic or quasi-periodic motion. So um, in the left, we show how the how we compare the the, the, the semi-major axis, uh, and in the in the right, we show that how we compare the eccentricity. In this case, in this particular case, so we see that um, in the left uh, we show that the relative difference between A and AL, A, A, L, and on the sorry, <laughs> both plots are in logarithmic scale in the vertical axis. So, uh, so to show orders of magnitude, uh, we uh, find please, that the smaller values. Please, Mauricio, you should conclude because otherwise yes. there will be no time for even yes, sorry, a single. Sorry. Yes, yes. So the, basically that the black region is a region of collision, okay? And uh, we see that it doesn't matter how, what's the value of, of, this, uh, of this value of lambda, but uh, this, uh, the value of lambda Q, of, of this hat Q gives the, the order of magnitude of the error or with the, in, the, in the comparison of the, of the two orbits. So yeah, I don't want to, to extend it more. So this is, this is all, thank you. Thank you. Uh